dear guests, dear participants of today's round table. Uh, this is a joint endeavor between Modern Education and Research Institute, which I represent, and my name is Ekaterina Tsaranok, uh, the um, Eurasian uh, National University named after Lev Nikolaevich Gumilov, and um, Matthias Korvinus College from Hungary. We are all very much aware of the situation that is going on about the uh, university rankings. Of course, we know about the discourse around the merits and demerits uh, of the university rankings. However, for the moment, probably those pitfalls are not enough to somehow abandon the rankings. And still, the university rankings determine quite a lot for the university life, for the academic life. And all the universities try and struggle to get as high in the ranking as possible. Of course, we can have another round table about advantages and disadvantages of the university rankings. However, this is not the purpose of this um, uh, round table that we are held in today. Today, we are going to talk um, about the results, preliminary results, uh, because it is still an ongoing project of the um, um, research study, comparative analysis of the participation of universities um, in the Pannonian plane in the QS subject rankings, funded by Matthias Corvinus College. We are gonna listen to the experts from the Hungarian side and from, Kazakh uh, from the Kazakhstan side about their problems, uh, their ways of solving those problems, um, how they see uh, the universities in the university rankings and what kind of a policy they apply to succeed to get higher in the rankings. And I would like to pass the floor to the co-chair of today's event, uh, Saulia Anafinova, who will present the subject, the topic of today's discussion, will present all the speakers and will moderate the round table uh, further on. Saulia, please, the floor is yours. Um, welcome everyone. I'm very happy to see both uh, Kazakh and uh, Hungarian representatives of universities. So um, today we are going to share the experiences of dealing with the uh, international university rankings as well as with the QS university rankings. Uh, we have two uh, panelists uh, today, uh, Miss Anastasia Karmiluk, uh, representatives of Eurasian National University, uh, who will share with us the experience of uh, this one of the leading universities of Kazakhstan and its participation in the global university rankings, as well as uh, Miss uh, Anna Urbanovic, uh, representatives of the Hungarian research team. Uh, which uh, includes uh, several uh, par participants of uh, several Hungarian universities. And in France, of the, this research team funded by the uh, Matthias Corvinus Collegium project, uh, the team conducts currently investigation of the uh, investigation of the uh, impact of uh, age and research performance of universities uh, in the global rankings. Uh, now I would like to uh, give a word to the Professor Laszlo Nadai, uh, policy advisor from the Obede University of Hungary, who is also a lead uh, of uh, the research team funded by the MCC College, uh, who would like to uh, uh, share a bit of more experience of working in this team and telling about the uh, ongoing project. Uh, Professor Nadai, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Uh, I, I hope uh, everyone uh, hears me. Just a short reply. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> so I also would like to uh, welcome uh, both uh, my uh, Hungarian research team and uh, especially our guests uh, from uh, Kazakhstan. Uh, 
this uh, is a very uh, important uh, addition to uh, our uh, research uh, efforts uh, in Hungary to outreach to a country that uh, can provide uh, us uh, with uh, uh, several uh, insights uh, we are not uh, aware of because in uh, Central Europe, uh, we are uh, a little bit uh, closed uh, <laughs> uh, geographically and uh, uh, we are always uh, considering uh, our uh, nearest uh, neighbors. Uh, they are our uh, benchmarks. And uh, I think uh, it is uh, both uh, important uh, to look uh, to the West, uh, to the more developed uh, countries, compare uh, ourselves uh, with uh, the best uh, universities uh, in the world, uh, Cambridge, uh, Harvard, uh, Berkeley, and, and so on. And also uh, very important uh, to uh, communicate with the uh, universities uh, that are uh, in the in the same boot, uh, just uh, like we who who try to catch up with the, <laughs> the best uh, of the best, uh, because we are uh, faced with uh, with uh, the the same problems or or uh, similar problems, and maybe we concluded uh, to different solutions uh, for the same problem, and if we uh, share. Uh, our uh, reasons or, or, or replies to these questions, uh, problems, then we, we both uh, uh, can be uh, better. Uh, we are a small research group that is uh, funded by Matthias Kogenes uh, Collegium, focusing uh, in the, the broad field of, uh, of uh, university rankings, uh, we, are, we are focusing on special problems uh, that uh, the Central uh, European or, or Eastern uh, European universities are facing. If we want uh, to improve our, our ranking, uh, then uh, uh, maybe the, the most uh, important uh, asset in, in this uh, respect uh, uh, are the human workforce uh, uh, who can produce uh, uh, research output, uh, who can uh, teach uh, the lessons, who can make uh, international uh, corporations, who can attract uh, industrial money. So every uh, aspect of, of the ranking indicators are very closely uh, related uh, to the human workforce, the professors, uh, assistant professors, associate professors, and, and so on. And we found that uh, uh, in Central Eastern Europe, and especially in Hungary, uh, we are facing with uh, uh, not not only the same problems as as uh, for example the universities in the states or, or the United Kingdoms Kingdom, but we have some some special uh, problems uh, because of uh, of the fewer financial resources because of uh, the mobility because of the language barriers. And we, we uh, try to, uh, I don't know, point out uh, the problem to the, the policy decision makers. And uh, we hope that uh, uh, whoever is uh, responsible for, for the higher education now in, in the Hungar <laughs> Hungarian government will, will uh, listen uh, to us. I, I think we, uh, have uh, made and we, we try to make in, in the near future to, to make some uh, addition uh, to the global 
uh, research uh, literature on uh, university rankings. Uh, we publish uh, those research results and uh, I, I think uh, uh, Anna is uh, happy to <laughs> Uh, uh, tell you uh, some details of it and 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 of course uh, we can uh, send you the the manuscripts uh, of uh, of our uh, preliminary results and if you uh, find uh, those results uh, interesting we are open or we would be very glad if we could uh, collect uh, data from your country and the neighboring uh, countries of, uh, of uh, Kazakhstan in order uh, to compare the situation in Central Eastern Europe and uh, I don't know it's Central Asia or how, how to <laughs> uh, define this uh, geographic uh, region. Uh, so if, if we could uh, compare uh, the, the data in Central Eastern Europe and, and Central Asia, I think uh, it uh, could be a very uh, interesting uh, research uh, result uh, on an international level, and it could be uh, published in, in the best uh, uh, journals uh, in the world in, in this respect. So if you find it interesting, then we, we would like uh, to cooperate with you. So thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much, uh, dear Professor Nadai. Uh, now uh, I suggest that we uh, go to the main part of the uh, round table and I would like to give floor to Ms. Anastasia Karmiluk, representative of the Eurasian National University. And uh, we would like to uh, hear about uh, the experience of this uh, great research university from Kazakhstan and its uh, involvement in the university rankings. So Anastasia, please, uh, the floor is yours. Can you hear me now? Okay. Can, yes, can you yes, see yes. me? Okay, thank you yes. very much. Just, I do apologize. My camera is uh, installed in the keyboard, uh, keyboard, so you can see only my, I don't know how to, how to call it. How can you see me? So, so, so sorry. But uh, thanks a lot for invitation. Perfect. It's perfect. The view is thank perfect. you very much. Just sometimes tell me, uh, look uh, like a down, okay? <laughs> because I'm watching. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, I'm very happy to uh, present today and to share with our humble experience of participation in ranking. And uh, first of all, let me tell you a little bit about our experience and about our journey in the ranking and in the general ranking. And then we come uh, down close to the subject uh, ranking because subject ranking, as you know, when today we're talking about QS, actually it uh, refers to times higher education as well. So both subject rankings, they are like a derivatives or they derive from the general one. I have prepared my presentation and if you allow me, I can share with that. I hope you allow me. It doesn't take lots of time, just 15 slides, but I am sure they will be very, uh, very useful and very interesting. So can you see now? Uh, yes, we can. Let me do it like that. And wow. So I called uh, my presentation today, you know, journey because it's a real, the real journey. And it takes so many years for us, like since, 2000, uh, 2009, the first hour attempt, but of course uh, our visibility started late in 2012, if I'm uh, not mistaken, I shouldn't mistake. Uh, thank you for the presentation of our university as one of the leading. Yes, we are one of the leading in, in Kazakhstan after our like a flagship uh, Kaznu University and some words about us. Uh, we are a comprehensive university with just 26 years old. And today we have certain faculties, 31 uh, scientific institute. We have one representation in uh, Belgium in the base of uh, Yekaterina's Institute. Uh, 11 cultural and education centers, and one of them will be interesting for you, I'm sure. I will talk about this later. 
uh, you will see 65,000 alum, uh, alumni and just 26 years old we are. It's because our university wasn't um, like a done by on, on scratch. It was emerged of two institutes, so we counted those alumni as well. Today we offered uh, more than 260 educational programs in uh, bachelor, in master, and in uh, uh, PhD. And these programs are in English, in Kazakh, and in uh, in Russian. And uh, we also offer six to one dual or double diploma uh, degree. Yeah, programs. Faculties you can see on the slide. And uh, we have everything except medicine and except agriculture. But we have biotechnology and some research that concern some medical and some agricultural uh, topics. Uh, so this is our this is our history. Uh, finally, this year we uh, entered top hundred top three three hundred yeah three hundred. We got uh, the place to 77. We are 43 in QS top 50 under 50. This is ranking is also derived from the general one. And unfortunately for us, and unfortunately for many young universities, this uh, ranking is not going to be uh, published anymore. So this is the last year. We are, so it's like a his, it will stay in history as well as our 42nd place in Eastern Europe and Central Asia in uh, QS Emerging Europe and Central Asia ranking. I'm sorry, there was some kind of mistake. Uh, because since this year, unfortunately, we uh, and Hungarian University, we were in one pool, but now they decided to help say divide us. Uh, Hungarian University go into the Europe ranking and we go into Asia. Actually, we are in Asia ranking and you will see our results in 96. So now we are in one pool with such uh, universities like the National University of Singapore, uh, City of Hong Kong University, uh, Polytechnic of Hong Kong University, Sinhua University. So the uh, competition is very, very, very high, and for us, it's 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 a challenge. And we are, I can't say that we are lucky, but we are very proud that this year we we are in top hundred. That this is like our main point where we go in. But uh, we was all, always talk about QS. Uh, why we talk about QS? Because QS is um, uh, like a document um, mentioned in all the state documents. Uh, and I will show you which documents I mean. Uh, Times higher education is not our point, main goal, but still we are in, we are participating. And um, our success, unfortunately, is not high, is not what we are um, expected, but we are working, we're trying to do our best to, to do it um, uh, to do it better. And, uh, but you know that the more universities participate in, uh, the more competition, the higher competition is, and it's very, very difficult to like you know push, push each other in, in, in this ranking. Anyway, in terms of higher education by subject, uh, this year kind of record, we are uh, ranked in four subjects: social science, physical science, engineering, and education. Not so high yet, but uh, if we when I'm not saying if. When we do our research better, we will be in position high. And other rankings you can see and on the screen. Uh, and see, I can share with the presentation later if, if it's interesting. Uh, in general, there are more than 16 ranking where you can see our university. Unfortunately, we are not in Shanghai because you know that the criteria there is a little bit higher for us. So about subject, this year we did records, but as uh, I see the um, uh, kind of like, uh, how, to, how to say it, the more, uh, the higher you in rankings, in general one, the more subject you have ranked. Like this year, it's last year, we uh, went 324, and from that year's results, you see uh, nine ranking, nine subjects were ranked plus two subject areas. 
and the, uh, the main uh, achievement for us, it's a hospitality business and leisure management. We are in top 100. It was like a wow effect for everybody, but it was expected for, uh, for the um, uh, head of the, of the tourism department and economic department because it's in, in, the, uh, in this faculty. Uh, for rest of the university uh, faculties, it was like a wow, you are in 100. Their place is 62 and they are going to beat and they're going up. They are very, very motivated. This is actually what is their uh, first uh, uh, maybe thing of, of the all ranking. It's motivate people, motivate not only students to enter this university for this uh, particular subject, but motivate the uh, faculty motivate the top managers and motivate actually everybody. Art design 150, uh, history 200, and what is interesting about them, hospitality business, history, law, politics and international st st studies, business and managers, the first time they entered this group, this uh, subject, just, just uh, how, how to say, zelitele. How, how to call it? <laughs> yes, the rocket, oh, yeah. rocket, yeah, rocket in the uh, up to the rankings. Uh, linguistics, for example, they are also very, very uh, happy uh, because before that they entered three hundred. So it's not the first time when lingu linguistics appeared in the ranking. It was two years ago, and but now they are also sort of all their strengths and all their resources they focus on linguistics and i'm talking about for example faculty of philology because in uh, if you look at the 48 uh, ranking subjects in qs there are linguistics and modern languages in our faculty of philology they have both but they decided that let's take our resource on linguistics and up this subject uh, economics and econometrics, it's a second year uh, in the ranked and physics astronomy is kind of our veteran because uh, it was the first um, subject which entered uh, five years ago. It has its own history and uh, it was up and down, up and down, but now it's like in, in, in the middle. I guess this is their best result for, for, for the last years. And uh, what is the most um, um, which criteria have, um, help them to stay in in this subject ranking? It's a publication and here index uh, here, here right index here right because you know that each subject has its own criteria and different weights of criteria. If we take for example hospitality business, it's uh, ninety percent for reputation. It's um, from academic uh, and from employer reputation. But I'm talking too much about our achievements. Uh, let's go down. Uh, this is uh, false and down, false and down. <laughs> In 2014, 303, we were very close to 300. Uh, it, 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 for us, it's something like, I don't, I don't know. For me, for this year, it was entered uh, 300. It was kind of, I, 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 I don't know, my goal of my life. And I did it. Uh, and now finally, 277. I hope we will stay. Why I say I hope? Because this year, QS made a big surprise to, uh, to all of us. They will uh, bring two new criteria. And I will, you probably know them, but I will uh, tell you later. So, why we are we in the rankings? I found like a two motivations. Uh, first, I uh, call it like a practical uh, results and, and uh, uh, like official, uh, officialized results, but uh, then I decided to motivation. First of all, it's a growth of number of students, including uh, international ones. Like um, five years ago, uh, international students, we counted around uh, 400. Now we have more than 1,200 students. The same about uh, general number of students. Uh, it grows every year. Like the intake of this year, it was about 5,000 students for each, um, for each level, bachelor, master, and uh, PhD. Income, students come to university, students bring income. <laughs> of course, it raised. Interest from high rank university. So like uh, 
top of high rank university say so below you also ranked your well strengthening the cooperation with current partners it also influences a lot and and reputation of course when you say that you are in top 300 everyone is looking at you differently at the same time give you some responsibility because you need to like um, hold the mark i don't know if it's a russian <laughs> Ru Ru russian saying but you need to uh, like a correspond to this um right yeah Cor co correspond this um, place and our mot motivational documents which push us and motivate the same time it's a national project called education educated nation before that it was uh, probably uh, i remember state uh, program of development of science and education Gpron, and then it was uh, removed and another one was uh, um, signed then uh, after, uh, this is a, like our key document and then development strategy of uh, our university plan of the university development it's two different documents because, because one of them going with uh, money uh, next annual operating plan so each year we have uh, depends on um, uh, uh, depends on the development strategy. We are making operating plan where all the events uh, and figures for this year we are uh, signed. And action plan of the promotion of the you know, new international ranking, but this plan is just uh, belongs to probably our department, department of our uh, of international cooperation, department of science, because it's like detailized events what we should do in order to get the uh the position uh so what changed actually i said some of the examples uh number of international students seven percentage this year number on of inviting professors uh, 13 uh, percent number of incoming academic mobility student and geography is also raised from 50 you see here to 180 and geography is very very like you know very wide number of double diploma program up to 61 uh, it used to be 30 and growth of in inter-university cooperation i'm calling them dormant agreements that those agreements with which were just signed and just filed but now we uh, push them we uh, different um, actions were done so they are now in active mode and 40, 70 Third, uh, 73% of, of this agreement are walk up, walking now. How to rise in rankings? It's not uh, mm, a kind of recipe or something, just our, probably it's my personal uh, experience. So first one is uh, visibility of the ranking results among the universities. And uh, I, I, I'm sorry, I found just this picture. Uh, but you, you you should better see the whole alley around the university, like an alley um, uh, near the university, and uh, everywhere was a flag with all the rankings where we are. So promote uh, rankings results among students and among faculty, especially it's a it's a task number one because, for example, five six years ago, it's like we saw that ranking it just for us for our department for my manager but now everyone is inspired everyone is like happy everyone is anticipating the new result because everybody knows what is what ranking is next one teamwork it's not uh work only of one department it's uh, i just um, put down here some of them but it depends on the university of course it's international cooperation, it's a science, it's a faculties, it's a research work, it's a top managers and everything on the regular base. It's not like we just started today and we will see the results in, I don't know, in June. No, it's every week work. All, all our thoughts, they like a focus to what, what these actions can, uh, how this action can affect our ranking for example we sign agreement and we know that with this new partner we are going to work in order to increase to international students or visited professors or research or publication so everyone is like it's it's here now <laughs> it's like i don't know in the court somewhere 
Next one, close cooperation with the partners, because this influence and academic reputation, it's influence on citation, public, uh, citation uh, on publication and international faculty, because we can exchange here. And also, also I should uh, mention the new uh, criteria, it's uh, international uh, research ne network. Yes, international research network. It will be counted since this year. Close cooperation with alumni, with industry, with companies, because it affects the reputation among employers. As, and we know that uh, if compare methodology of QS and methodology of times higher education, times higher education, probably 70% is focused on the research uh, criteria. Uh, uh, QS so far, it's a uh, 50% on reputation. So here we can beat a little bit. Because um, if you look at um, all the sources, open sources of them, um, of our rate of publication, it's still high. I mean, out of the country, but we are working on that. Recruitment of international students and faculties, because it's two criteria which are counted in uh, in rankings. And of course, the last one is publications, 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 and of course, quality one. Uh, in quality uh, q1 q2 and all the uh, those publications which tomorrow will be cited this is um, this is how to rise in ranking no nothing nothing else i think uh this is special slide i made it for our um, today's prospective partners because i want to share about our very close and very friendly uh, cooperation with Hungary. I mean, not on the universities, but first of all, with the embassy of Hungar Hungary in Kazakhstan, with the minister of international affairs and trade of Hungary. You even see some um, uh, famous people, statesmen of Hungary, who are our honorary professors. Um, I didn't put here just re recently on the 1st of October, we had a concert of one of the folk group at, at Yenu. I just didn't find the uh, um, picture, I'm, so, I'm sorry. So partners, University Sevit, Central European University, Istvan Laran University, uh, Svitoy, it's like I say, it's a whole, whole Istvan, I, unfortunately I, I can't read uh, Istvan University. And how we're working here, academic mobility, PhD advisors, visiting professors, joint publication, guest lectures, research, cultural events. And finally, in 2021, we opened Center of Hungarian Language. So this center is like your home. When you come to our university, you are very welcome to room number 236. This is a small uh, home of, for all Hungarians. We study Hungarian, I mean, uh we have a special professor uh she's working with us two years she's from hungary and she teach uh, hungarian language and uh, she's working for turkology in the department of uh, department of turkology in the faculty of international relations but her courses they are like open for everybody they are for free and last year we start uh, courses uh, within one uh, project, it's called like a silver university, it's for retired people, so 15, yes, 15 people, uh, students and um, retired people, they attend the, uh, uh, the courses, but we try to promote uh, this um, Hungarian, the Hungarian language, especially for those students who are going who are planning to go for Hungaricum uh, stipendium scholarship because we found it very effective if you have at least some, uh, some basics of Hung Hungarian language uh, when you will compete for the, for the scholarship. So uh, please, we are ready to um, uh, collaborate within uh, the center as, uh, as well. And opportunities for collab of collaboration for subject ranking. I'm sorry, uh, just over time, yeah? Yes, over time. Uh, today, I would like to congratulate everybody. 16th of November, it's opening of data submission for QS University ranking and regional ranking, and of course, for subject ranking, because I told you that those rankings data going coming from uh, general one. How can we work here? Promotion of Hungarian stipend to in our university. It will increase international student number, not maybe so how how high, but uh, 
steps, one of these steps. Joint events, panel, seminars, conferences, summer school, particularly on some subject. And, and we could like uh, support each other, in, for example, let's say in management or in you know, business and, uh, and, and other. Invited the clicks to participate in QS academic survey because it, uh, it will be started very soon by us, by other uh, universities. And I do um, uh, invite everybody, you, your colleagues, to actively participate and spread the survey among uh, the invitation for some survey, not, in, not survey itself because it's prohibited, uh, but the invitation to sign for survey among your colleagues. And of course, joint publication, which leads to international collaboration network, which is going to be a challenge for particular for us. Uh, uh, yes, I think I can finish here because it's not very interesting information. <laughs> so thank you very much for your attention. Um, I do apologize again that it's so long, but I try to um, share with my long exper experience in working uh, with rankings and with rankings, I'm since 2030. Okay. Thank you, Anastasia. This is a great presentation. Uh, Can I stop I, it <laughs> somehow? Yeah, I would like stop to share. Thank you. Okay. With, uh, a lot of interests uh, in uh, cooperation overall from uh, uh, in Hungary towards Central Asian universities, and I was very happy that to see that there is that Eurasian University takes uh, so, such an active part in uh, cooperation with Hungary uh, and the topic of rankings is uh, really interesting and we do share some common challenges and uh, I've now uh, uh, I would like to briefly introduce uh, so the research team of um, uh, Laszlo Nadai, Peter Shashwari, Anna Urbanovic and me in Hungary are currently researching the impact of uh, age of university professors on uh, research perform on performance of uh, universities in the rankings. And this is uh, a problem which is common for uh, universities from all over the world. So uh, uh, this is very important for the future, uh, future stra strategic development of all universities. And now I would like to give floor to uh, Miss Anna Urbanovic, uh, who will uh, give tell more about this research. And uh, I hope that we will have a fruitful discussion afterwards. So Anna, the floor is yours. can't hear you for the moment. Okay, while, while Anna is uh, uh, working on the sound issues, uh, I would like to uh, ask a question to uh, Professor Nade. Uh, so, uh, dear Laszlo, could you tell us? Uh, uh, I've noticed a lot of interest uh, in Hungary, in Hungary, in Hungarian universities towards uh, recruiting uh, Central Asian students. So, uh, could you tell a bit about it? Uh, as a as a person who has direct direct experience. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can. Yes, uh, at least my microphone is working. Uh, on uh, one of uh, your uh, slides, uh, Anastasia, uh, there was uh, the, the phrase the Stipendium Hungaricum. This is a scholarship program uh, sponsored by the Hungarian government. And in fact, uh, at my university, Obuda University, there are students from Kazakhstan. I don't know from which uh, Kazakh universities, but I think it is uh, working uh, quite well. 
this uh, program. Uh, the the main rationale behind this program that the students don't have to pay <laughs> for uh, being in in Hungary, but of course uh, we are uh, also open uh, for paying students <laughs> students on the on the web page of uh, my university. Uh, there there are uh, the the numbers and. Uh, Basically, there are Hungary universities, uh, the, the universities that have medical schools, uh, where there are uh, quite a huge number of international students. The, maybe the, the best uh, Hungarian uh, medical school, the Samuels uh, University, uh, has uh, uh, about uh, 50% of, of the students from uh, other countries. Uh, there's a special uh, university that uh, deals with animal care and uh, veterinarian studies. There are the number of international students approaches 70%. No, I mean... Uh, uh, oh no, we, we just catched your voice, but we lost you. So uh, there are special fields that uh, uh, have uh, quite a huge number of, uh, of international students. And uh, the process is basically first uh, students uh, came here with uh, Stipendium Hungaricum. They uh, get uh, to know with, with the university. And when they return home, they, they are our ambassadors and... <laughs> and Laszlo, uh, sorry to interrupt, yes. but does it work now? Yes, yes, oh. yes, oh, good. We, we can okay. hear you. Or sorry. At least Just I continue. can hear you. I don't know the others can hear you, but I can hear you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I don't know, maybe you should check that from your universities, are there any students with Stipendium Hungaricum? If there are uh, Stipendium Hungaricum sponsored uh, students, then uh, we can uh, contact those uh, students, can uh, introduce uh, them to the other universities, and uh, they can be uh, the ambassadors of Hungarian universities and uh, vice versa. So they also can be ambassadors uh, of the Kazakh universities because in Hungary, there is a growing interest uh, on uh, spending uh, one semester abroad. And uh, maybe you also can attract uh, Hungarian uh, students as well. Can I add? Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, yes, we know about Hungarian uh... Hungarian stipendium, a Hungarian scholarship. It's uh, this year, I guess, 250, right? Scholarship were allocated like last year. Mm -hmm. the, same, the same time, you know, we are working on the intergovernmental um, agreement. When your students are also, I don't, I can't tell you how many students, but I'm sure it's not 250, it's a less. Mm -hmm. But uh, still, we would be very happy if. Um, we had some kind of ambassador of our university to attract students, for example, for master degree mm -hmm. or for PhD degree within this scholarship, because it's like an un unbalanced. Uh, to be honest, last uh, the last year I was invited as a, a member of committee who to who select the students, the candidates for scholarship for Hungarian scholarship, and I would say that was. Uh, 1,000 candidates, so mm -hmm. it's like a, we're different groups, but the interest to Hungary, interest to this uh, scholarship is high in, and higher. And um, the operator of the uh, scholarship in, in our country is Bolashak, is, uh, I mean, Center of International Programs, and I guess it's uh, finishing now the, the finishing the uh, the, the documents submission. So in January, they will start again the uh, selection 
selection process. But what yeah, I'm there's a of, strict timetable. Yeah, how how yeah. is it working? But yes. what I want to say that we would be very uh, glad if we can find the ways to also to promote our Kazakhstan uh, universities amongst your students and attractive students, not only for academic mo uh, mobility program like one uh, one semester or one mm -hmm. year. Mm -hmm. But to get to get a degree, we could talk about it. Uh, besides, uh, on eight of December, as far as I know, there are going to be intergovernmental uh, meeting between mm -hmm. Hungary and uh, Hungary and uh, Kazakhstan, where the list of documents will be signed. Uh, we are signing with Corvinus University, and I just found out that with Abuda, Ob Obuda, right? Obuda, Obuda, yes, yes, yes. Obuda, yes. Obuda University, you also will have a new partner. And as far as I know, it's Yasavi University. So mm -hmm. they are very, at the same time, they are very interested in, uh, in uh, 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 Corvinus University as well. But we are open. We are open to discuss our perspectives between the universities and sign agreement with you and start working. We have few programs for our students who can go abroad to you. And we have a program, Welcome to you know when you student from your universities. Mm -hmm. I, I, it, it's to everybody who is today here uh, in this session with us. Uh, and um, the program is open now. So you students who would like to come to Kazakhstan, especially to Astana and to uh, feel what is minus 30. Uh, so they're very welcome. <laughs> We are, maybe, we are maybe summertime. Summertime. <laughs> no, su summertime. We do, we, do, we, do, we have two terms, and each terms you will cover. You will uh, see uh, how to say it. Cover the uh, winter season because winter will start since November till April. So whatever term you will come, you will see what is. There, there will be my yeah. yeah, it's okay. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and what's about the global warming? <laughs> Uh, global warming is uh, is working here as well, but it's not so way as you. <laughs> so it's not minus forty, but only thirty. Yeah. I understand. Uh, yes. No. Sometimes it's minus forty as well, but just a few days. What has changed? It's uh, we have this minus forty, minus thirty in the beginning of the winter. If uh, previous years it was like a uh, January and February, the the coldest months. Mm -hmm. But now it's like a December. Mm -hmm. So there's a shift of season. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, this, this yeah. is a sh this kind, kind of shift. Yeah. Uh, so I think we should give back the floor to Anna yes, sorry, uh, and, sorry. and return to science. <laughs> sorry, let's go to yeah. back to science. Thank you. Do you hear me now? Does it work? Oh, yes, I'm yes. Good. Perfect. I am happy. It's just half good result. And do you see my... PPT as well, hopefully. Yes, okay. perfect. So uh, thank you very much. And I would like to thank uh, for Saule for organizing this uh, very interesting round table. Uh, I am a PhD student of the University of Public Service, which, which is uh, located in the capital of Hungary in Budapest. Uh, here we are trained uh, uh, as a public uh, servants including the, the military officers and law enforcement officers as well, and of course the diplomatic uh, personnel of Hungary as well. So today uh, I would like to uh, shortly introduce you our latest uh, published quoted article with the Associate Professor Mr. Peter Shashwari. Uh, it was published just uh, last week, actually in a, a Simago journal ranking Q2 uh, publication and journal, and uh, the title is Subject Area Risk Assessment of Four Hungarian Universities with a View to the QS University Rankings by Subject. Because it, we, we think that it is not only important to get indexed in these uh, rankings, but also to keep it and uh, keep the, the, the good position on these rankings. And for a longer term, we have to deal with the institutional research uh, strategy. As uh, Anastasia also mentioned that uh, in the Kazakh University, you have this uh, developmental uh, plan and the operational plan and the national strategy. So it, is, um, it was an empirical and comparative analysis 
there we investigated the different tools and strategies that university can uh, use to maintain and to increase their position in the university international rankings. And uh, we were very interested about and measuring uh, to what extent the, uh, the institutions are exposed to their leading researchers, to their mentors, as we call it by our concept, and if there are some tools and strategies to uh, these universities uh, replace them with other mentors, so the supply with the younger generations of the researchers. The importance of the topic is uh, quite obvious, I think, for all of us here. Uh, the research and the technology and innovation have a direct effect on the social and the economic welfare of the states. And uh, therefore, investing in the research and development determines the competitiveness of the countries. There is a Sorry. growing competition regarding the source allocation. So there are a lot of uh, universities competing uh, with each other for the national uh, resources, financial resources. And at the institutional level, there is a growing competition to be indexed in the international university rankings to gain um, uh, reputation, not just for national, but international scale, and also to attract students and uh, the top staff of the field, and to uh, get a better chances for interna internalization, which includes international cooperation, exchange programs, accreditation program, and so on. The institutional Absolutely. research. Uh, we're, still, we're still at your first slide, so maybe uh, you can. I don't know if you if you're already moving in your presentation you, yes. in your slides, but we're still seeing yes. the first slide. Can you use okay. the presentation mode in the PowerPoint application? Yeah. Okay, then I will share the screen, and maybe it is a. Do you see it now? I think that now it's. It shouldn't be in the first slide. Yes, yes, that was great, thank okay, you. Okay, thank you, thank you for the feedback. So um, uh, I just started to talk about the institutional research strategy and why it is important. So basically it is an issue for the human resource management and also the talent development department for the universities. And it must include the development of the research strat strategy at the institutional level. As you may know, the research teams play a key role in sustaining the scientific output of the institution with their publications achieving a greater impact and more references in general. These research teams are led by the mentors, which uh, in our concept, the, the mentors are the leading researchers who are taking up the central position of the, of the network. And uh, they have a lot of collaboration, co-authorship, uh, co uh, publication. So they are the, the most productive researcher in the network, if you, if you check the, based on the publication output. The organizational work of these mentors are very important and, uh, and, uh, and essential in the implementation of the research uh, strategy. In the international literature, we found two basic uh, literature dealing with the different career stages of the researchers. One is from 1980 written by Super. Uh, he distinguished between five stages, uh, you can see on the slide, uh, and there is another one more recent from 2007 written by Hall and Chandler, and they created four career stages, as you, as you may see on the slide. The training of the new mentors and preparing them for leadership roles is very time consuming. Uh, there is a Hungarian article published in the Scient Scientometric Journal they tell that the, the, the golden age of the researcher where they achieve the most productive uh, period of their whole career is around uh, 48, 49 years old. So what it means for the institutional perspective that it is crucial to assess the number of publication and the age risk by the mentors and to develop the research uh, strategy to motivate uh, the current mentors and to train the new mentors growing up. The methodology for our uh, comparative analysis was, uh, was empirical. Uh, I would like to start with the data collection. As I have already mentioned, we checked four Hungarian universities, uh, including the Semmelweis universities in Budapest and three regional big universities, University of Debrecen, Szeged, and Pécs. 
uh, Semmelweis University is uh, mainly uh, um, specialized in life sciences and medicine, while the other three universities are the big and prestigious universities of sciences in Hungary. So they have a, a different uh, portfolio from social sciences and humanities and arts, also engineering and technology. And all of them have uh, life sciences uh, portfolio as well. For the, for the data collection, we use the CYBOL, which is the research intelligence online platform. And we collected the leading top topic clusters uh, in which the universities are very active. And also the top institutional author based on the number of the publications. So basically this was the, the database that we used. And uh, for the data analysis, we uh, created the concept of the risk from two different angles. The one is the, the contribution of the mentor of this leading uh, researcher to the given topic cluster. We, uh, we checked that if it is uh, more than 50%, it, it may cause a high risk. Uh, in the case, this researcher leaves the university for some reason, getting old, uh, retired, uh, ill, um, the, the extremities for this or, or whatever happens to, to this leading researcher. On the other hand, uh, we created the concept for the age. Uh, we distinguished uh, between three career stages, including early stage from 25 till 50, middle stage from 50 till uh, 65, and the late stage uh, above 65 years, uh, years old researchers. Of course, uh, these career stages were used to, to check what kind of different tools the university top management should consider in how to retaining and how to keep them in place in the same university on the long term. Uh, I would like just to shortly present the hierarchical built up. So in the QS ranking, as you may know, distinguish between five disciplines and 51 science categories. And in the Scopus, the civil system distinguished between uh, 1,500 topic clusters, 97,000 topics, and uh, they include and contain more than 70 million publications indexed in the Scopus. So basically it is a hierarchical uh, system and we considered here the topic clusters. Uh, I would like just to shortly introduce the main results. Uh, it is the... Uh, it is the topic clusters as a descriptive statistics of the, of the university performance. As you may see here, the Semmelweis University has the most topic clusters and uh, the other universities, regional universities are represented with fewer uh, topic clusters. But within these topic clusters, you can see also that the Semmelweis University has more topics, little topics. So they have a more diversified uh, research agenda within these bigger topic clusters, while the other universities have less uh, diverse focus on the, different, uh, on the different topics. About the concentration of the topic clusters, we can see that uh, roughly 10% of the topic clusters contribute to the 50% of the total output, scientific output for the university. It is very crucial to check what are these top 10% topic clusters because they contribute to the international visibility and also the international performance of the university, which guide finally to the good position in the, in the university rankings. The second is the age distribution of the mentors. Here it is uh, possible to see that uh, basically the, among the younger scholars and the older generation, the late uh, stage uh, career uh, researchers, we can see a, a very similar percentage. But the, the big difference between these universities that we found is that in the case of the Semmelweis universities, as you, as you may see on the graph, there is a very strong supply by the middle stage career uh, researchers, which means that of course they have many active years in front in their career. So the, the Semmelweis University will have a sufficient uh, and also already recognized with the international performance scholars to keep, uh, to be the mentor for the long-term. 
However, the other uh, uh, three universities have the problem because they don't have that much supply uh, from the middle uh, career uh, researchers. So they have a, a very, very uh, different uh, problems to, to, to solve actually with the, the research strategy. And the third that I would like to show for you is basically the risk analysis and the, and the result of these risk analysis based on the contribution of the mentors to the topic clusters and based on the age of these mentors. Here as well, you can see that the Semmelweis University have the lowest risk clusters, uh, risk clusters meaning that uh, their uh, top, lead, top uh, researchers are uh, relatively young and there are uh, several researchers in each of these topic clusters. It means that even if one uh, falls out from the system and doesn't keep in the university on the long term, they can have the supply to replace his work or her work with another scholar. Uh, however, the, the other three universities, the Seged, uh, Debrecen and Page, we can find that the number of the double risk uh, uh, topic clusters, meaning the more than 50% risk uh, is uh, presented with the higher proportion. And, uh, and due to the extent of the mentor input, the institution survey have a similar proportion of high risk topic clusters. For example, the, the, in the case of the University of Page, we could find 40% of these high risk uh, topic clusters. While, for example, the Semmelweis University, it is just 14%. So it is based on the contribution of each and every mentor to the topic clusters. In overall, we can see that the Semmelweis universities uh, perform the best uh, in this risk analysis because they have relatively young scholars and a diversified, uh, very strong uh, researcher personnel and staff. Uh, we can see some conclusions here on the slide. The first is the Hungarian, but to a wider scope because our, uh, our research now is focusing on the Central and Eastern European uh, countries, universities. Uh, all of these universities are relatively little in the size and can specialize only to some research fields. So they, they are better performing on the subject rankings rather than the general big ranking. It, it is just the, the, the level of the size, simply. The second point, uh, research teams contribute to the institutional publication output significantly with the key roles of the mentor. Therefore, the universities must create research strategies to keep their mentors as much as possible. Uh, in the third point, you can find the first uh, two, uh, basically two paths that we, uh, that we distinguished. Uh, where there is a larger contribution by the specific mentors, it is essential to create the motivation plan and the talent development plan, how to, how to develop the younger researchers to get and to replace the older generation and becoming the mentors. Uh, while where there are uh, more diverse pictures with several active young researchers, in the case of Semmelweis, creating the attractive working condition is essential to keep them in place. So to keep them in the same university, of course, for the long term, because the, the internationally recognized researchers many times get better job offer in abroad, whatever. So they have to concentrate on how to uh, keep them in the place. The fourth point is based on the analysis, it is enough to, to consider and to focus on the top 10 uh, topic clusters of each and every universities, because they are uh, contributing to the 50% of the total publication output of the university, which will finally guarantee the international visibility and uh, in the international, internationally recognized good performance of the universities. That is essential and of course the main requirement of all these uh, university rankings not just the QS, but also the Times, the ARVU, the Shanghai ranking also. And the fifth, uh, based on our results, however, we, we checked four Hungarian universities, but with our methodology and uh, model accepted uh, for the publication, we can, um, we can apply it in different other universities, other regions and uh, countries. So I think, and I would like to invite all of the Kazakh partners 
that it is the it is the place for the collaboration. So if you want, we are we will be very uh, happy to co uh, to cooperate on this. We already have the methodology, and uh, we are very interested about your problems, let's say, and challenges, and uh, how to develop it together, and how to catch up to the to the best performing developed uh, Western countries, United States, uh, and the United Kingdom. And uh, thank you for your attention. Here you can see my email address, but you can also uh, contact with me at the, at the LinkedIn. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, dear Anna. Thank you for your presentation. So basically, uh, earlier in the presentation by Anastasia, it was shown, for example, that Eurasian University is quite good in uh, certain uh, subject uh, rankings. And uh, we can see that uh, probably there, there are some professors in these faculties, like Faculty of Education of Eurasian University, who do contribute a lot to the position of uh, the university in rankings. And the question is how we can uh, create um, uh, employment, better working condition for these leading researchers. And how can we uh, create um, uh, like some mentorship environment in which these leading researchers could uh, uh, like leave young researchers as, an, as the next generation uh, in order to continue the performance of university at the same level. So if uh, uh, anyone has any question, now we can, uh, uh, there is some time for us to, uh, to answer questions, any questions of the participants. If anyone has a question, please kindly raise your hand or you can just use the microphone. Okay, so far, nobody. So uh, my question now, uh, so there was the, the discussion between um, uh, earlier, uh, the discussion of potential collaboration. So I think that there are different opportunities to collaborate for uh, Kazakh and Central Asian and Hungarian universities. Uh, and rankings is one of the these interesting topics. Uh, and if you're interested in this methodology, we can always share with you the, the publication of this team uh, in uh, international journals. Uh, so um, my question to uh, currently to Anastasia, like, do you feel that there is some something that universities are worried if some leading researchers go, are going to retire and uh, their research performance will decline? Yes. Yes, there is a tendency. If, for example, we again take our physics and astronomy and we will see that they are falling down each year in both intense higher education and in uh, QS subject, uh, physics and astronomy. Here it depends everything like two, three uh, researchers. Like and when these two researchers are uh, retired and the young generation, because we know according to the some statistics, there is like a gap between the elderly and between the young one. And one of the like decade is presidai, is there is no, they're just coming. This is this is true, this is one of the problems. And you know, for Kazakhstan, uh, publication and citation of actually all research criteria is one of the lowest it doesn't only for our university at all universities of the uh, of, of the country and uh, probably this is the main reason why we are so low in uh, times higher education and why the new rank in criteria will affect us more or a, a lot especially uh, mm -hmm. this one research uh, international research uh, network because um, the weight will be taken from teacher and student ratio and teacher and student ratio traditional is one of the strongest criteria for Kazakhstani and for Soviet uh, countries, CIS countries, let's say. So this is uh, something of what our top managers are thinking now. And of course we have some uh, methods of uh, some instruments like uh, bonuses for those uh, researchers who uh, 
uh, published in Q1, Q2, they have a special system of bonuses, like every year they awarded with, uh, not awarded, they paid, let, let, let's say. So, uh, and as uh, for us, operational plan and strategic plan give some figures the same, it's for the researchers, the same for the Department of Science, and they have their rowing methods, they have the instrument, how to motivate, how to inspire, how to increase the rate of publication, because the rate of publication is also indicated in the national program, national uh, call to education. So, yes, it's going to be a problem. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you, Anastasia. So Thank you very much. <laughs> Okay, now my question is to Anna. Uh, so you mentioned the case of Semmelweis University. Uh, this uh, was an interesting moment, an interesting finding uh, of your article. So Semmelweis University is a medical university uh, in Budapest, Hungary, which is famous for, uh, uh, for the quality of re international research. And not only the quality of research, but uh, the research scientists based in Semmelweis University in the recent years uh, conduct uh, a very high level medical operations and medical uh, and they are engaged in leading medical um, innovations so uh, anna do you think that uh, the your findings uh, confirm that this university is uh, one of the best thank you for the question uh, what do you mean by the best because you know it is just one uh, one aspect to concentrate on the mm -hmm. publication output of a university. There are other many, many different indicators. And uh, in, in, in a wider scope, you can, you, can, uh, you, can, you can distinguish even be between the different disciplines. For example, in the engineering and technology, it is crucial to collaborate with the companies and the, the industry, for example, and they, they for, for for them, it is one of the most important uh, quality indicator. Mm -hmm. For the social scientists, on the other hand, for example, the number of the books written by the researchers can be an interesting and uh, specific indicator with the other uh, disciplines does not, uh, does not appear or does not appear with that much uh, um, impact. Um, actually, what I think is that the Semmelweis University is, is a, has a very good supply uh, because they have a very active and strong uh, collaboration with their hospital centers where the clinical researchers, the researches can be uh, conducted and carried out. And uh, it is um, because we, we have already checked the QS ranked uh, institutions and their top uh, 100 collaborator partners. And what is an important and very interesting fact and result of that uh, analysis uh, carried out some years ago is that it is uh, not only the academic partnerships contribute to the scientific output, but it is uh, very, very uh, appearing and, and uh, essential to see that uh, also the industrial partners and government uh, type partners are crucial for this. So for example, here in Hungary, I can tell you that, for example, the Hungarian Academy of Sciences and the university is collaborating to a great extent with our Academy of Sciences. It's a very, um, just a pushing, you know, that is growing the, the tendencies of the scientific output of the university, simply because they can gather the financial resources that is necessary many times for the, for the natural sciences, these uh, centers have equipment that for universities it is impossible to buy because of the lack of the financial resources and whatever. And on the other hand, what we can see is that the, the ratio of the international collaboration is, is the, it's another key uh, indicator. Okay. Thank you, Anna. Now I do hope that there is this this topic will be uh, will that today's discussion and today's presentation can be a good opportunity to increase professional and academic collaboration between Kazakhstan and Hungary. So I would like to thank our speakers uh, Anastasia Kormiluk and Dana Orbanovic for the great interesting information about universities' involvement and participation in rankings. And uh, I'd like to give a final floor uh, to uh, 
uh, Yekaterina Tsarano, the head of the Modern Education and Research Institute, which is a partner of a number of Central Asian universities and their representative in Europe. So, uh, Yekaterina, please, the floor is yours. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Uh, unfortunately, uh, oh. very much, Soli. Unfortunately, unfortunately, today my uh, internet connection does not want to <laughs> to play on my field. But anyways, I was extremely interested in the discussion today in all those findings that the colleagues presented. And of course, I would like to add at the end of our discussion that Modern Education and Research Institute remains committed to promotion of collaboration between Hungary and Kazakhstan. And we hope that due to this collaboration, new scientific projects, new research projects, new articles will appear and um, both partners will gain not only from this collaboration, but only uh, also in rankings due to this collaboration. Thank you very much for, the, for um, uh, taking time to participate in this event. And uh, if you, um, if you are, um, agree, we will uh, publish the link to the recording of this event um, on our YouTube channel, and we will distribute it among our members, because I think that those who couldn't uh, join, I have already received a couple of messages from our uh, regular participants that they would love to get the link to the recordings and to, to review it, because uh, there are so many valuable information was discussed today. So please, if uh, if if you uh, don't want uh, the recording to be published, please reach out to us and say so explicitly. Otherwise, we will go forward and publish it for our membership who was extremely interested in the outcomes of the conversation. Thank you very much for for the preparation, for your slides, for your speeches. It was extremely interesting and valuable for all of us. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. I would also like to add that uh, today we learned from Anastasia an important information that uh, uh, some more cooperation is coming in the future uh, between uh, Hungarian and Kazakh universities. And I want to mention that uh, the Yasari University, which uh, is going to partner with Opuda University, is located in the warm part of the country. <laughs> so in Yasami University, it's not minus 30, so you can go there and it will be a good weather. No, so they are not participating today, but our university is participating. <laughs> so. <laughs> okay, thank you very much to all thank the participants who came to listen to the, to the speakers today. And thank you very much for your comments in the chat. Uh, we are you. very happy. Thank you very much. Thank you. See you. Bye. Goodbye. See you. Bye. See Bye. you. Bye. Have a nice Bye -bye. day. Thank you very much.